Hey everyone, I've got uh, six packages here, but three of them sort of go together, so I guess that's, you know, five total. Um, let's get started. First one up is this one here. Um, I tried to get a little bit of information on it, but there's like... It's at the point now where these packages have like f three or four stickers, one on top of the other. Um, it's ten dollars and thirty nine cents. November twenty seventh ordered to January seventh arrived, so it's starting to get kind of long in the tooth there. Um, but I did know what it was at some point because uh, I know it was ten dollars and thirty nine cents. Oh yeah, I do remember these exactly. Uh, so these are linear slide potentiometers. So they do the same job as a rotary potentiometer, uh, but these slide. Now I do believe, yeah, that I don't know if you can read that. That says uh, B103. That's uh, B. I believe is for linear, and uh, 103 means one zero three zeros. That's a 10k resistance. And I do believe this is a stereo pot, so it actually has two potentiometers inside, simply because there are four connections here and two here. And so, um, yeah, this is going to be used sort of for, uh, like, controlling things, because I think um, it's more visual when I do a tutorial if I just go up and down like this than when you turn a knob, because you can't really tell where the knob is at but this is easy to put a little marker or you know an LED on top or something and to just have it uh, move. Let me get the multimeter, we'll see if we can test these. Got the lovely Kaiweets HT118A here. And um, so yeah, we've got four pins over on this side and two pins over on this side. If I were to make an educated guess, um, I would say these two pins, uh, so you know on one side here, uh, that would be the full 10K resistance between them. And then uh, between any one of these two and that one will be the divided resistance in here. So let's just give that a shot like this and like this. 10.5K. Oh, nope. That's not right at all. Maybe then it's between these two neighbors here. Kind of tough to get in there. 2.9k. Oh yeah, there we go. So there's 10k ish. That's a 9.54. We know the Kaiweets meter is pretty accurate. So let's go about halfway. That would be like there. Yeah, about 5k. And all the way at the bottom. Yeah, like zero. So there we go. They feel really smooth too. So yeah, the reason why I want to get these that you can get them on little boards. In fact, I. I have some on little boards, but these are much cheaper like this. Um, I got 10 of them. Yeah, they were a dollar a piece. And then I can make a footprint for these in KiCad. And then I can provide the footprint to you guys so you can use these in your projects. So that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. Um, yeah, I like the idea of, you know, having sort of linear controls. It's very... Uh, it's tactile, you know. It feels good instead of uh, on a knob. You can't tell sort of at a glimpse where you're at unless you have like a you know a cap on it but then again you can change the position of the cap it's just not the same uh, I think I like these things more and I think they're more visual so yeah got 10 of these and uh, since I will be making a lot more PCBs as I'm learning uh, KiCad 6 and getting better at it um, that means that I need more components and here we go on to the next one Next one up is this one here. Again, no indications, but because it's so flat... Oh, maybe I don't have the right price because it feels like there's something else in here. Whatever. Uh, $5.11, November 16th to January 12th. And I think this is something flat, so I'm going to be careful not to cut into it. Oh, it's not at all what I thought. It's these uh, TO92 packages, I think. Let me see if I can get the number off this. It says Dallas 18B20. I believe that is a temperature sensor. Give me a moment. 
So it was indeed the correct price. So it's, it is the DS18B20. It is a temperature sensor that uses a one wire interface. So it actually has a power ground and a single data in and out. Uh, 3 to 5.5 volts uh, in. Uh, it also specifies that it can be um, powered by a data pin on a micro. So it must use like NAF all for current, as you know, the um, Australians would say. Um, I can read from minus 55C. Uh, it's actually minus 35C right now, so it's uh, it's cold. Um, to 125C with uh, 0.5 degrees Celsius as a um, plus minus 0.5 degrees Celsius accuracy from minus 10 to plus 85, so, you know, in that range. And, yeah, they cost me about 50 cents each because I got uh, 10 here, and uh, it was $5.11 with the shipping. So... Um, programming not being my strong suit, I don't believe I'm going to be uh, spinning these up right now, but I'm sure that there's an Arduino library that I can use with this. If you have a favorite one, let me know in the comments and, you know, at some point I'll do a roundup of all the uh, temperature sensors that I have gathered and maybe we'll have them all working at once or, you know, on different systems and we'll see if we can compare them. So, yeah, pretty neat. Um, this is part of a weather station sort of project that uh, should be starting shortly. It depends. It really depends because I don't want to go outside in the minus 35 degrees weather. On the next one. Next one up is this one here. It actually has some information on it. Resistance uh, times 3. Uh, I think I know what this is since it wasn't that long ago, November 16th to January 13th. $12.62. Paid a lot of freaking money for this. All the things that, you know, if I would have gotten on Amazon, I could have returned. But instead, I went on AliExpress and then, you know, promptly lost my job after. Yes, this is exactly what I thought was coming in. Uh, these are the big brother to the DHT11. These are DHT22 um, sensors. This is a, a temperature and humidity sensor in one. And I guess it also uses a one wire sort of interface. And they came with little pigtails um, because it has in, out, and, you know, single center pin there. So I bought three of these. Um, now, apparently, the DHT22s are more, either more stable. Uh, faster or more accurate than the DHT11 or maybe all of the above. And so it was suggested to me that uh, if I'm going to make a project with a DHT11, should probably have a provision for uh, people to supply their own DHT22s at the same time. So here they are. I've got a couple of these now. I can start experimenting with them. I'm actually curious to do a head-to-head -head shootout between the DHT22 and the DHT11. I just need an accurate way to check uh, temperature um, aside from, you know, these DHT sensors. So, yeah, make sure you subscribe to find out. Next one up is this one here. And again, no information. Um, but this one says RF in the corner. That's, I put that there. And the next two also say RF. So that's why they go together. And I believe this one here is the most, uh, standalone style. So I will open this one first. $17.23. Now, I didn't want to spend that much money. Um, but once you see what this is, maybe you'll understand what I'm getting at here. Okay, thank thankfully they're the correct ones. Uh, so these are BNC, I don't know if, is that the male or the female? I guess that's the male, so BNC male. A little bit of a little length of cable, and these tiny little connectors. In fact, uh, I'll probably just put the name on the screen here, because I don't remember what they are. And... There's five of them because that was the cheapest way to, to get them. Um, but that is for something specific because I have to do a first look at this DS213 oscilloscope. And so far, playing with this, I really like it. But the only thing I don't like is that these little connectors here, they're tiny. And none of my scope accessories, including... Um, the adapter for my function gens fit in there. So now I have, hopefully, I think that's the right connector there. And now I can hook up my function gen to this 
and uh, test it out. It seems correct. It does have a pin. Yep, it does have a pin. Let's compare it with what's inside here. This is the connector here. Yeah, that looks identical. Perfect. So finally, I'll have uh, something to uh, mess with some accessories with this. But not only for hooking up my function gen, I believe that this here, the DS213, has great potential as an automotive oscilloscope. And for it to be an automotive oscilloscope, it needs to do a couple of things. And, so, and those things include um, taking current measurements. I have a current clamp. I have a couple current clamps. And, and I'd like to test them for use on this. Is the screen too small for automotive use, for example? Um, this is just at a great price point where, you know, you can either buy this or a set of snap-on screwdrivers, and I would argue you'd probably save yourself more money off these um, because some of you won't believe this, but for the last couple of years, I've been professionally using a dollar store screwdriver. True story. Um, just to see if, you know, if anybody would notice, nobody's noticed. I put some weights in the handle and they hand it to people and people look for the branding on it. They think it's, they think it's a snap-on or something, but it's not. So, Sometimes you just don't need the $200 tools, but this one here might just be worth your while, and these adapters are for me to figure out if that's true. So in the same vein as this, I've got these two. This one has no information on it. Um, January 1st to January 19th, $6.43. This one here, though, has BNC adapter written on it, and this was $9.08 January 1st to January 19th. They were, actually these three were ordered at the same time. They just didn't come in at the exact same time. So, these are little uh, T junctions. So it would be, uh, what is this? One female and two males on a T. And this one here. Oh, hopefully it's the right polarity. Yeah, they are a uh, female on one end and they're a load on the other end, 50 ohm load. And so what was happening is I was feeding a signal uh, from my function gen into my scope and the corners were being rounded off and I didn't really understand what was going on. Uh, someone in the comment section said, I need to put a T with a termination resistor like so, or a, call it a dummy load, like so, put that on and then put my cable on here and that will fix the problems. So I need to get my stuff in order to test higher and higher end stuff. And so I need, you know, to, to figure out ways to make things function properly because I need to know when it's the function gen that can't keep up with the scope or the scope that can't keep up with the function gen. So that's what these are here. And I've been actually uh, really excited to try this out and see if it works. So let me set up the DS1054Z and we're going to give this a shot. So here is the problem I'm trying to solve. So uh, this is a function gen that is supposed to be good all the way up to 60 megahertz. And this is my DS1054Z, which is supposed to be good up to 50 megahertz and this is all you know single channel on both so I have a one megahertz square wave here and if I zoom this in a little bit you see how the edges aren't clean they're rounded uh, in fact if I change this into a falling wave look at that like it's just it's a it's a crazy slope and so at one megahertz, I would have thought that either this would give me a square, like a crisp square wave, or this would read a crisp square wave. And I'm almost thinking like it's this thing here, but someone said to put the T at the end here and the uh, 50 ohm terminator. Uh, and so I'm going to do that now. So here's the 50 ohm terminator. And by the way, because this thing is USB powered, 
I can power it from the Rigol, so it's the coolest thing I've ever seen. So there it is. There's so it's it definitely attenuated the signal, but look, it's the same ramp. So my issue is I need to know if this is causing the rounded corners or if this is causing the rounded corners. Because if it's a sampling issue, well, that's not good because this is supposed to be able to sample a lot uh, faster than that. I mean, it's uh, one gig samples per second at single channel mode. Um, this one here is 200 meg samples per second. Um, but I mean, if this is as good as it can get, then this thing is not so great for accurately depicting uh, waves at higher speeds. This is only one megahertz. So, I, and you know what, the problem even gets worse the faster we go. So if I change this to five megahertz, and then I can either auto the display or just go like this, see how round these corners are now? And so I'm not sure if the problem is this thing driving or this thing receiving. One of these two are giving me a rounded edge. Um, I will do an investigation using a couple of the other scopes I have, because I have that really fancy O1 uh, PC-based oscilloscope that also has a function gen, and I think it may have better than 200 meg samples per second. This thing is a lot cheaper than that O1 thing. Anyways, I'll once I figure it out, I'll know if I need another function gen or if it's just you know some sort of sampling idiosyncrasy with the oscilloscopes. And so that's it. Uh, these uh, six items. Did I forget an item? I always feel like I'm forgetting to put something back into the pile, but um, I don't think so. Oh, well, um, this makes up today's mailbag. I want to give a special thank you to my Patreon patrons. Um, they are the greatest folk in the universe, and if you want to join them, head down in the description below. Uh, especially times like these, uh, if you listen to the podcast, you already know what's going on. So, yeah, it's very appreciated. Um, but if you want to support the channel without it costing you any extra money, use my affiliate links or just uh, watch, comment, subscribe, and share the videos. Thanks for watching.